Hello, welcome to the vodcast on waves. First vodcast on waves with an introduction to oscillations. I'll go through this quite quickly. Don't forget the protocol, play, pause, rewind and review as much as required and I strongly recommend taking notes and the method I recommend is the Cornell note-taking method and I also recommend the 3-2-1 protocol. Try to write down three things that you're coming across that you're either coming across for the first time or that you are uh, reviewing, uh, two pieces of information that you did not know before and one question that you still have after watching the vodcast. Our objectives are described here. You can read through them. Uh, in terms of uh, definitions, we're going to start by looking at an oscillation. So waves and oscillations have many things in common, and by looking at oscillations, we'll learn a lot of the vocabulary and some of the mathematics that we need to cover waves without having to worry about uh, all of the detail. One of the advantages of oscillations is that we're generally talking about uh, one dimension rather than two. And the classical example of an oscillation that we're going to look at is a simple pendulum. Uh, the one on the right is an actual real life example, the one on the left is a um, somewhat moderated example. You'll notice that we're talking about an object moving so it connects back to previous units, it has velocity, uh, it is, uh, if, as long as it's stretched, it's an example of circular motion, which you may or may not have covered yet, and also we have energy. Um, the pendulum, if it's an undamped pendulum, if it's just swinging backwards and force, forwards, will always be trading potential energy to kinetic energy and then back to potential energy. We'll look at that in more detail later. The example of a grandfather clock is one example, but here is another example of a mass on a spring, and that is also undergoing similar oscillation. You can always watch that video and analyze it if, if you wish to do a little investigation. For a simple pendulum, we're always talking about a small mass. In real world, masses aren't point size, but that's what we consider. And the um, thread or whatever it is that is attaching the pendulum bob or the bit at the end to the pivot, we consider to be both light, as in it doesn't have any mass itself, and inelastic. Uh, we're also generally, despite the earlier photograph, uh, only dealing with small angles. The motion is cyclic, which means that it goes in cycles, and one cycle is from one point back to the same point again, moving in the same direction, which is an important point to say. So if you're measuring a cycle from the equilibrium position, then it's the next time that the bob passes the equilibrium position, but moving in the same direction. The period is simply the time taken for one complete cycle, generally in seconds, and a frequency is the number of cycles per unit time measured in per second, or hertz, HZ. Notice that time period and frequency are, are kind of the same thing in that if you know the time period, you know the frequency because there is the equation frequency equals 1 divided by the period or period equals 1 divided by frequency. Uh, another term that you will need to know if you haven't already is angular frequency or angular velocity which is given the Greek letter omega um, and it's in units of radians per second. So it's how much of an angle the uh, pendulum is moving through in any one second. And it's related to the frequency using the equation 2 pi f. The displacement is simply the distance and direction between the current position of the pendulum at any point and the equilibrium position. As a displacement, it's measured in meters. Amplitude is a special displacement because it's the maximum displacement. So the amplitude of a simple pendulum type oscillator is constant. The amplitude doesn't change, but the displacement is always changing. A couple more phrases are in phase and out of phase, so phase and phase difference. If you have two oscillators that are in phase, it means that they basically match each other. 
they have the same period, they have the same frequency, they're going frequently at the same time in the same direction. So they are in phase. Uh, imagine you have two pendulums, identical pendulums, swinging next to each other at the same time, then they are in phase. And they would have a phase difference of zero. And the units of that is generally radians. Okay? And out of phase, even if it has the same frequency and period, same length, same mass, same everything, and yet as one is swinging through equilibrium while another one is at its maximum um, displacement at the amplitude, then they would be considered to be out of phase. And the phase difference would be um, the... Uh, it's a bit difficult to describe, but it's basically um, the maximum phase difference that you can be, I guess, is... Uh, pi radians. If one if one is passing through equilibrium traveling in one direction while the other passes through it traveling in the other direction, that's the phase difference of pi radians. And you go back up to closer to zero as they get closer as an oscillator. Okay, and this video illustrates that quite well. They start off completely out of phase, so 180 degrees of phase difference if you like. But the um, thing that's set up here, because you can see it's shaking and wobbling backwards and forwards, will mean that they eventually end up back in phase. It takes a little bit to do. This is actually a demonstration of a property called resonance, which we will look at in a little bit of detail later on. Okay, you can see that the two metronomes are now in, res in phase. So the forces on a pendulum is the final part of this, really. The weight obviously acts straight down and is constant. That does not change. And then the only other force, because we ignore air resistance, is the tension. Okay, now the tension does change. It changes with relationship to the angle. And we often have to worry about it in terms of its components. So the restoring force is a force in a straight line back towards the center, the equilibrium position. Okay, And that's obviously related to both the size of the tension force and the angle, so that varies over time. As displacement increases, the overall force also increases. Force is directly proportional to the displacement. But notice it's in the opposite direction. Force is measured in the direction it's acting in, which is always towards the equilibrium position, whereas displacement is always measured away from the equilibrium position. So F is proportional to negative X. Since force is proportional to acceleration, or acceleration to force, that means that acceleration is therefore also proportional to negative X. And in any type of oscillation you have where force is proportional to negative um, the displacement or the acceleration is proportional to negative the displacement, that is simple harmonic motion. Um, if you haven't done so, uh, then in class you should have done or will have done an experiment where you look at the variation of displacement velocity and or acceleration with an SHM oscillator. And the results that you should have got are something like this. You should have got a sine wave basically for all of the things that you can measure. Displacement, velocity and acceleration. The period of all of these should be the same. Now they won't be all in phase together. In fact they can't be. Because if you remember from the forces unit, these graphs are actually um, the differential of each other. In other words, the velocity graph is equal to the slope of the displacement graph. So the velocity is zero when the displacement is at maximum. Uh, and similarly, the acceleration graph is the slope of the velocity graph. So velocity is at maximum, acceleration is at maximum um, when the slope of the velocity graph is at its maximum. So you can look at those graphs and see that comparison. And those are objectives so you can check if we have covered them. Thank you very much.